Operator-owned brand devices are rather curious mobile phones, which vary from being ultra-low cost, plastic fantastic sort of things, all the way up to devices which are within touching distance, if not actually being full-on flagships, albeit usually for rather less money than flagships in order to differentiate them. In this video, I will show you and review EE's Hawk own brand smartphone device, which is available on pay-as-you-go from £129.99 with a pay-as-you-go pack or on contract from £15 a month. Now, responsible disclosure, EE did lend this device to me, but they have no editorial control over this video and I haven't been paid to do this either. I have been using the Hawk as a daily driver for about a month now and therefore this unboxing experience will not be 100% authentic because clearly I've unboxed it before in order to use it. But first we should take a look around the box where it just has some information there about the band support and where it's made and then IMEI and stuff which I've obviously covered up. And then not too much on this side apart from where it says Hawk and that it has JBL headphones included in the box. But then that's really pretty much it from that side of things. And then if we slip the top off there is the phone inside there. If we just slip the phone out to one side for a moment which I will then cover in detail for the review as well as showing it around we can then take a look at the unboxing in a bit more detail. So I'll just take this foam out and then we get this little insert which has our SIM removal tools so that we can insert the SIM into the phone and then there are just some quick start guide and some paperwork inside there. And then inside the box is the kind of usual accessories that you expect. So there's a mains charger for the phone which somewhat surprisingly is two amps at five volts. So it will supply quite a lot of power to the device. And I have noticed that the Hawk does actually charge really quite quickly considering that it isn't supposed to have anything like fast charging. Then inside this packaging is just a USB-C lead because, because it uses USB-C, some people might not have the cables for that. And then there are the JBL headphones which also are a headset as well with a microphone so that you can use them for phone calls. Aside from that, like I say, the only other side that I forgot to mention is the back of the box, which doesn't really say very much. So that's, that's that really. And now we can move on to the phone itself, actually. So here is the front of the phone and there is the eight megapixel front facing camera as well as the earpiece and if I just switch the phone on as well we can see the 720p display there which is maybe a bit bright for the exposure I've set for this room. And then on the base there are the two speaker outlets although this does only have a mono speaker on it and then the USB-C port for charging and data transfer left of the device has the SIM slot which you can open using that SIM removal tool and then the back of the phone is quite plain really apart from the EE logo there and some just information about EE and then the 30 megapixel back facing camera and the fingerprint reader there as well and the LED flash the right side of the phone has the power button and volume up and volume down. Unsurprisingly, considering that the phone comes with a wired headset, it does have a headphone jack on the top as well. Now that we've given the phone a good look around and unboxing, it's time for the fun part of the video, which is reviewing it and talking about the internals and how it performs in day-to-day -day use. Of course, one of the most important parts of a phone is the screen because clearly you'll be looking at the screen for quite a long period of time. And first things first, the screen on this phone does get really, really bright and therefore this should be visible in very bright light. 
and actually the image quality is surprisingly good for a phone of this price and actually compares very well against the other own brand devices that I've had to hand. Notably also the viewing angles of the phone are very very good and you can view it from extreme off angle without getting any sort of significant colour shift or loss of contrast. Further enhancing the Hawks media credentials is its performance in the sound quality department thanks to those bottom facing speaker grills which means that this phone does emit sound with a surprising amount of loudness as well as sound quality as well. Now this is just a clip I shot um, around some very friendly ducks which had just been uh, fed by uh, some people who worked at a like, bridge viewing platform type thing and the sound level at this point wasn't all that loud because they were clearly pretty content but still the that this is quite loud on the phone even if it may not appear to be on the video recording of this. The Hawk is based on a MediaTek MT6750 chipset with an 8 core CPU with 4 Cortex A53 cores at 1.5 GHz and 4 at 1 GHz. Now what this means in practice is that performance is quite smooth on the phone. So you can switch between apps quickly and also I did a Jetstream browser benchmark test on the phone just to sort of get an idea of how its performance was in browsing applications and we can see there that it's scored 18.996 which is quite a mid mid-range score, certainly something like a Sony X Premium with a Snapdragon 835 will obviously score a fair bit higher than that, but certainly in sort of day-to-day -day web browsing around websites it is smooth without really any issues to speak about at all. Uh, notably the actual load time for my website here is probably about as dominated by my broadband speed as it is really by the CPU and capabilities of this phone. Storage and memory wise it has 16 gigabytes of internal storage of which you can see there's about nine and a half gigabytes available after Android. I've installed quite a wide selection of apps on this and you can still and you can see there is still a reasonable amount of storage left alongside some pictures and videos. In terms of random access memory, it has 2GB of RAM and while it says there 1.5GB out of 1.8GB used, which seems quite a high percentage, um, that will be largely down to the fact that I have got quite a lot of apps running in the background on this, which will obviously use some memory and also to be fair Android is pretty good at RAM handling, I've not noticed much in the way of slowdowns with this switching between applications. Another absolutely critical aspect of a smartphone in terms of user experience is the quality of the cameras. Now the Hawk has a 30 megapixel back facing camera which takes good vibrant shots in good light with reasonable amount of detail but in low light the shots can get a little bit noisy and begin to lose detail as processing tries to deal with the noise. The back facing camera shoots 720p video but it doesn't have optical image stabilisation and the image quality is reasonable if not that amazing to be honest. The front facing camera is an 8 megapixel shooter and the image quality is sort of acceptable for doing selfies and things like that. Certainly I didn't have any particular issues using it on Snapchat for selfies, but in low light again the image quality does suffer a little bit as it does with really any camera. In terms of communications capability, the phone is CAT6 capable, so up to 300 megabits per second download on EE's network and I've achieved some very nice speeds of 
up to about 230 megabits per second using it just out and about in the city center of York when I was testing the device. In terms of Wi-Fi, it is dual band, so it's 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and this is definitely appreciated, and I mean, as I did some tests, the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi was usually about twice as fast as the 2.4 gigahertz, just due to the nature of 2.4 gigahertz congestion in the area around where I live. Now, the Hawk is specifically marketed in terms of its EE network capabilities, not only because of the CAT6 that I spoke about earlier, but also because it supports voice over LTE and Wi-Fi calling with EE, which means that you can do voice over LTE for higher quality calls, and the Wi-Fi calling means if you have poor signal at home or if you just get better reliability, you can do your phone calls and texts over Wi-Fi which many low-end phones do not support. Now that we've spoken about the phone's media capabilities, so like its screen, its sound, alongside its performance based on, say, its CPU and just moving around apps, and then the performance in terms of networks, so its 4G performance and capabilities with Wi-Fi calling and Volte, it's time to move on to some of the last important things to talk about. And the first of these is battery life. And I've had absolutely no problems with the battery life of this device after using it as a daily driver for a day, and I'm quite an intensive user. It would still often have 20, 30, 40% left without really too much trouble. And certainly during this, the period I've been filming this, which is about three, three hours so far, the screen's been on full brightness for lots of it, and it's on about 70% battery now, which is really quite surprising. In terms of milliamp hours, it's 2,500. However, the screen is relatively small on it compared to modern flagships, and the chipset is also relatively low power as well. So I'm not massively surprised that the battery life on the phone is quite good. However, obviously, if you are doing a lot of video recording and taking a lot of pictures and using intensive apps a lot, the battery life will obviously go down quicker than my experience may represent. The phone does also have Near Field Communications or NFC which can be used for electronic payment. The final topic of discussion that I'll speak about is the fingerprint reader on the back. Now fingerprint readers can be a massive cause of frustration for device users if they do not recognise very well or if they don't work properly or if they just are not very reliable. However, the fingerprint reader on the back of the Hawk is positioned in a good place, certainly for my hands. I've not had any trouble switching between having the fingerprint reader on the back of the Hawk and then using phones with it on the front at the bottom. And actually, it is also very quick and reliable and lets you in very, very quickly as well, without any issue at all, as you can see here. So I don't have any complaints there at all. It just, it just works, basically. So that's very good. Thanks for watching this video about EE's Hawk. In conclusion, I really do like the phone. It's compact, it feels great, and it is a great performer in day-to-day -day use, whether it be web browsing, or using social media, or just chilling and watching some videos. Alongside that, it has the network features like voice over LTE and Wi-Fi calling, as well as being Cat6 capable, which is above and beyond what many phones in that price point have. So all in all, very good phone, and like I say, I've had no problems using it as a daily driver, even having been habituated to modern day expensive flagships for quite a long period of time. This video is the first phone review I've done in quite a long period of time. So if you have any comments about the way that I've reviewed the device or anything else that you want to know about the device for that matter, then let me know in the comments and I will then try and be better in the next phone review. So thanks for watching again and I'll see you on the next one.